Hello folks, my name is Mark Wilson and I'm the founder of AccuModel, where we inspire confidence in hydraulic modeling. Recently I've come across some problems working in EPANet with using constant horsepower pumps, where if you put a control on the pump, it doesn't behave as you would expect. So here's just a simple model I created, reservoir, pump, tank, and some demand junctions. Here's the pump. I don't have a curve on there. All I have is a thousand horsepower. And what I'm trying to do here is make this tank cycle. And the controls I have on it are the pump is named pump one and the tank is tank one. So if tank one is below 10 feet, we turn on the pump. If it's above 19.9 feet, we close the pump. Pretty simple, but doesn't work very well for constant power pumps. So we see if we run it, we get some error messages, we get some negative pressures, some disconnection. That's because the tank is actually running dry. We see here we open up the tank, we plot the pressure, and we can see that right here at about eight and a half hours, the tank runs dry and so it disconnects the network. But I've given this pump enough power that it should be able to fill this tank very easily. So let's just see what's happening if we open back up our status report. So the pump is on at first because I set the status to open. But then it closes because the control that turns it off activates. But then about 4 hours and 23 minutes in, pump 1, where we've reached the bottom limit of the control, where the tank is at 10 feet, and it says pump 1 changed by tank 1 control. But we'll see if we look back in that graph that it's not turning on. So here's the pump. And we see it's not actually turning on, where it's not showing any flow anyway, until after hour nine. By then it's too late and the tank is dry and it's messed up our network. We will see though if we open up the table that there actually is a little bit of flow before nine but not enough to show up on a plot and not enough to make any difference. Later, after I show you the workarounds, I'll show you exactly what's going on inside of EPANet. But for now, we're just going to show you the workarounds. Okay, so here are the workarounds. We can go into controls, and here's the simplest one. Instead of making the status closed, we can just give it a very small pump speed. So this is a relative speed relative to the full curve or the full power, 1% open. And that was going to let a little bit of flow through on a constant horsepower pump, but it's better than having what we've got, which is it's breaking the network. Okay, so that's one way to do it, and we'll see how that behaves. So we hit run, and that run was successful. Let's just plot pump. We see that it turns on on a regular basis. Let's plot the tank. We can see that it turns on about as we would expect it. Okay, so let's look at just one little extra thing here. Let's look at the time series for pump one. And we'll see that we actually have, because we gave it a very small speed, a relative speed, we do actually have a little bit of flow going through, but we're reading in here in gallons per minute. 0.03 gallons per minute is pretty insignificant. Even when it gets up a little higher, it's still pretty insignificant in our results. So I think we're pretty happy with that. Let me show you one more workaround, and then for those that want to uh, listen in just a little bit longer, I'll get in a little bit more technical. So another thing we could do we could do an open and close status on a downstream link. So let's just do that for fun and we'll see how that changes things. So that downstream link is link three. So what we started out trying to do, but on a downstream pipe instead of the pump. Let's see how well that works. Run, same thing again. We, we didn't get any disconnections. We'll plot the tank, see if we get a bit, got a 
you know, pretty similar results. What about the pump? Yeah, pretty, pretty similar results. Let's just dig in just a little bit more. Open up the table. So essentially what happened was the results are pretty much the same, but we do have just a little bit more flow coming through when we pinch off the pipe. So you're probably wondering why is that letting anything through? Well, the solution isn't perfect. We give a, an overall accuracy in our hydraulic settings of 0 0.001. So the sum of all the flow changes divided by the sum of all the flows has to be lower than 0 0.001, which in our case, everything else had perfect continuity except for our pump. And so the, the solution worked. So a couple trade-offs. Now, if you're wondering what is causing this, go ahead and stick around. I'm going to get a little bit more technical and explain why that is. Okay, so I'm running EPA Net on a Mac. This is running Xcode, which is a free application on Mac where you can develop software. I've just downloaded the source code and I'm running it right from the IDE, the integrated development environment. So I've exported that model that we were seeing to INP file, and I'll show you guys, for those that are interested, how to run this out of an ID on Mac and Windows in future videos. So I'm going to go ahead and run that same model, and the beauty of running this in an IDE is we can kind of open up the hood and see what's going on and why things are happening. So this is, uh, I'll kind of point out what's going on here. This is computing hydraulics at hour zero. And this shows all the iterations, but we can make it print out to the console things of variables of interest. So setting equals 1.0, that's the same thing as open for a pump. And these are all the internal variables. Q is the flow, and the shutoff head, R is a resistance factor, and P and Y are just some internal ways that EPA Net calculates flow change and head change. So everything is hunky-dory here when our pump starts out. And by the way, when the first iteration, our flow is going to be 1.0, and that's internally, that's one CFS. That's the initial flow that gets assigned to all pumps. And then the iterations change it from there. So that's why we see a flow of CFS, and that's the units you'll see here. And internally in EPNet, the units of head are feet. If you have a system international model using meters and liters per second, those units are all converted into feet and cubic feet per second when it actually runs, in case you didn't know that. So everything's fine here. We start out with a flow of 1.0 CFS. After iteration one, that bumps up to 2 CFS. And then as we iterate through here, it converges on a solution. So for the first time step, we end up with a flow of 17.8 CFS and a delta H of 495 feet of head. So now what happened was that filled up the tank and the pump shut off. So we have a setting of zero that's equivalent to closed for a pump. And we'll just show here that everything's fine. But as we saw when I opened up the report at about hour four and a half, we see that we need some more water in the tank and the control tries to turn it on, but we'll see hydraulics at hour 4.23. We see up here right before that time step setting 0, now setting 1.0 tries to turn back on. But what happens? First iteration, Q0. So after we've shut it off, our Q, our flow, goes to 0. The solution solves, but even though the pump turned back on, flow is 0. Why is that? Well, the formula that EPA Net uses, and I'm going to work with the open source guys and see if we can get an update to the code on this and so that we don't have to use this workaround. But the, the current code, for lack of a better word, it blows up under this condition. When the initial flow is zero, it has a hard time digging itself out of the hole. This resistance factor just blows up and we're not able to get much flow out of there. So even though the setting is one, it's open, 
nothing happens. We just kind of go down here through more time steps. We saw in the initial graph that it eventually turned on. So what's happening here is eventually, just out of sheer luck probably, as it iterates through and the numerical solution changes, we actually get a little bit of flow and that kind of jump starts things. As we'll see as we kind of scroll down through here, we get a little bit more flow, a little bit more, and then at about time 12 hours, 11, 12, okay. So right before 12, we're still pretty low flow, but we're getting up there. We're reaching kind of a critical mass, if you will, of flow to where it's really going to jump up here soon. So iteration 3, once we hit 12 hours, it does take a few iterations. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 18. After 18 iterations, the R, we get a reasonable resistance factor again, and that lets the formula that's used in EPNet actually work, and we get a reasonable flow for that amount of horsepower that we're putting in. So that's what's happening. It's just the formula that's used for constant power kind of blows up if we're starting out our flow from zero. If you don't put any controls on it, it usually works fine, but if you've tried using controls that shut off the pump, a constant horsepower, a constant power pump, and you're having problems with the controls, this is why. Anyway, check out our other videos, subscribe to the channel, like us so other people can find these videos, and hopefully we'll help everybody.